Hello, my name's Karen Davies and I work as a diabetes nurse specialist. I also deliver training for the NHS Health Check programme, which is a cardiovascular disease prevention service. In this short video, I'd like to give you some information on the HbA1c test and how it can be used. In health terms, Hb stands for haemoglobin. Haemoglobin is a protein molecule on the red blood cell. We know that the lifespan of the red blood cell is approximately 120 days. We also know that glucose or sugar attaches itself to the red blood cell. So the higher the blood glucose level, the more glucose that attaches itself to the red blood cells. The haemoglobin alpha-1c therefore is a test that averages out the blood sugar level over the last two to three months. Along with the fasting plasma glucose, the HbA1c can be used as a diagnostic tool of diabetes. It's also used to measure ongoing control with somebody who has diabetes. One advantage against the fasting plasma glucose is that the person doesn't have to fast to have the test. We also know from research trials, there is an evidence base in terms of reducing the HbA1c and to improve outcomes. Some of you may be used to HbA1c being expressed as a percentage result. However, since 2009, the UK are adopting the IFCC, International Federation of Clinical Chemistry Unit of Measurement, the millimoles per mole. A normal HbA1c result is a reading below 41 millimoles per mole. A person would be classed as high risk of diabetes if their result was between 42 and 47 millimoles per mole. This is classed as pre-diabetes or non-diabetic hyperglycemia. Our current NICE guidance for adults with type 1 and type 2 diabetes advises that we target a HbA1c of 48 millimoles per mole. However, it's really important to individualise targets for the person in front of you, especially if they're at risk of hyperglycemic episodes or low blood sugars, and they have no hypo-awareness. The HbA1c, if it's not in target range, might be tested three to six monthly. Otherwise, it might be at six monthly to a year interval. There have been two large-scale clinical trials, the DCCT and the UK PDS, that both have proven that by reducing your HbA1c by 11 millimoles per mole, you can reduce the risk of microvascular complications by 25%. A person can reduce their HbA1c by making positive lifestyle changes. These might be maintaining a healthy weight or increasing up physical activity. A high body weight or large waist measurement can increase your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. To maintain a healthy weight, refer to the Eat Well Guide. This encourages you to eat at least five portions of fruit and vegetables every day with a higher focus on vegetables. Increasing fibre and whole grain foods while reducing saturated fats can also help you to maintain a healthy weight. Current physical activity guidance advises 150 minutes of moderately intense activity. This is when your breathing rate and body temperature increases. We are all advised to sit less and to move more, ideally achieving 10,000 steps in a day. 
Any patient with results greater than 42 millimoles per mole should be referred on to their GP. For further information, visit diabetes.org.uk. Gather all the equipment you require to perform the test. Ensure you have a pair of gloves, an alcohol wipe, some cotton gauze, and a lancet. From the box, you will need the analyzer, pouch number one, and pouch number two. Before the testing begins, explain the procedure clearly to the patient and ensure you have obtained their consent. Open pouch number one and stand the diluent bottle up, placing the blood collector on the table. Remember not to open pouch two until you have completed all the steps for pouch one. Check the patient's hands are warm clean and relaxed. If they are too cold, it might be difficult to obtain an adequate sample of blood. To warm the hands, ask the patient to rub them together or wash them in warm water. Ask the patient which finger they would like the sample to be taken from. Ideally, this will be the middle finger on their non-dominant hand. Clean it with an alcohol wipe to remove any possible fats, grease or soap residues. Then dry the finger thoroughly with cotton gauze as the alcohol could affect the accuracy of the results. Holding the finger from the base, push the lancet firmly on the finger to puncture the skin. Ideally, this should be at the side of the fingertip, about five millimeters from the nail bed, as there are less nerve endings here and it will be less painful for the patient. Dispose of the used lancet in a suitable sharps bin. Wipe away the first drop of blood, as this may contain tissue fluid. Apply pressure along the finger, but don't press near the puncture site, as this may affect the sample. Collect the blood by touching the tip of the blood collector into the blood drop. Do not smudge the blood or try to scoop the blood up. Give some gauze to the patient and ask them to firmly apply pressure to stop the bleeding. Ensure you have collected the correct amount of blood sample. Mix the dilution bottle and blood collector six to eight times. After this, stand the bottle on its end while you prepare pouch number two. Open pouch number two and remove the cartridge inside. Ensure the codes match on the cartridge and analyzer and insert the cartridge until you hear it click. Wait for the screen to display sample with a flashing blood drop. Now remove the grey cap from the diluent bottle. Apply the sample to the cartridge with a quick press and release motion. When you hear the click, it will allow the exact amount of sample to be inserted. Dispose of the dilution bottle in the clinical waste bag. Do not move the analyzer once the sample has been inserted into the cartridge. After five minutes, the meter will display three messages. QC OK meaning the analyzer has passed all of its internal quality controls, the blood test result, and finally, how many tests you have left on the analyzer. It will cycle through these three readings for about 40 minutes before turning itself off. Remove the cartridge with gloved hands and dispose in a clinical waste bag. Finally, share the results with the patient and record them in their notes.